Yeah, we're looking for spiders. I don't even know what that means. But Bobby's got wizard hats, and we have a wizard. Bobby, clue us in. Uh, yeah, Gwen Stefani of the POS show is joining us. You know him, you love him. It's Brandon Bonanza, because he's going through the cobwebs looking for you. I ain't no holler back, boy. <laughs> <laughs> You're not? <laughs> well, he said Gwen Stefani. So. I know, but I did message you and you got back to me. So you are a holler back. Boy. Ah, shit. I am a holler oh, this back. This shit is boy. bananas. B A N A N A S. Yeah, fuck both of you. <laughs> Brandon Bonanza Bananas. <laughs> How you been, dude? Me? Yeah, you. The oh, guy. I've I been talked great. To I, I've been really good. Uh, my show that I've been doing, that Over Sharon show, we've been having a really good time. And it's an interesting time because a lot of people that met listening to that show were like followers of Owen Benjamin. But there was this recent beef, I guess. I don't really pay attention to a lot of stuff. And so some of the people got out of that uh, whole thing. But we're and we're like in the middle. So they there was like the people who still support Owen Benjamin were like going crazy on Instagram and stuff and like torching these people. And we have people that both like Owen and don't that watch the show. So I'm always in the chat, like cut the shit out. I don't take any of this stuff. Like this is my show. This is about what was the beef about? I'm not in that world. So I don't know. What was the beef about? Uh, It started out as like a fun theological debate that Owen did with this guy. His name is made by Jim Bob. You've probably seen the guy's memes. Like they're all over the place. They're just these silly uh, cartoon memes. They're friends. They like hung out and were friends. They had this debate about the trilogy and then from there, it kind of digressed into like all this shit, and yeah, it was it, it got a little crazy, I guess. Oh, uh, did they make it personal, or like the fans made it personal? No, they kind of they made it personal, I think. And uh, it's it's kind of unfortunate. It's really we talk about this a lot on the show about division, and this we saw it happen. It's like I think a lot of mainstream religion is is uh, designed to keep people divided and conquered, you know. Um, but so I kind of we kind of saw it happen firsthand. And, you know, I think what what was going on was a lot of people were kind of putting Owen on a pedestal. They looked at him like he was a god where I just thought he was like a funny dude. You know, like you're a funny right. dude. Bobby's a funny dude. He's a funny dude. Right. So all these people were really emulating him. And then when they saw him not live up to their standard, they just kind of uh, freaked out about it. <laughs> so well, that happens to people that build their own false prophets. He wasn't trying to be a lit. I'm not an Owen follower, but I know that he was just had an idea and people jumped on it and he had a good platform, but he wasn't looking to be Koresh or anything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's funny because he would say that all the time, too. But I'm I'm still, like I said, I'm still friends because I've met people in real life around here that are really cool, you know, so I don't let any of that shit in, get in the way. Pat knows I'm friends with people that hate each other, you know, like yeah. that's just Brandon. <laughs> Usually always you're the guy in the middle. Like, yeah, I know both of them. <laughs> It's like, but do people lose their bear names if they drop out? Well, yeah, people. So that was the thing. They started taking their bear names down and <laughs> Owen kind of looked at it as like, oh, you're not backing me up. Like, fuck you. I did all this shit. So, yeah, it was. It was pretty funny. I mean, Bobby, you know, what would I, your bear name be? Uh, My name, my bear name. Oh, was yours, Bobby. Bobby. What would oh. your bear name be? <laughs> no, see, that's where you and I split paths, Pat. I wouldn't be a bear, and that's where I'm so different. If from we were Brandon. in the bear world, play along. What's our I, bear hang world? on, I will in a second, but I just want to be right. clear. I'm different from everybody because I am trying to start a cult. I oh, do want to be Koresh. What's so, your animal? Uh, I probably can give you some tips on that. No leopards. Snow leopards. That sounds racist. Ooh. Nope. Nope. Yep. <laughs> no, it's a, it's actually it. it the snow leopard would be the minority. sounds like an African who lives in Alaska. The, the snow leopard. Well, that's pretty funny. <laughs> But the snow leopard would be the minority of leopards, would it not? Yeah, but he'd be also the wisest. That's and the I'm whitest. Saying. I mean, come on. That was the joke. <laughs> That's why. No, I like where Brandon just went. Yeah, Brandon. So, Bobby, if you want to start a cult, ask Brandon the right questions of how to get a cult going. Let's do yeah. a cult. We no, need really followers. I feel like this is a trap already because a cult leader wouldn't take advice. If I have a direct oh, channel to God, you would have counsel, and then you oh, turn on listen, him later. Some it depends on the kind of cult that you have. If you really are thinking that you're God and you start a cult, it's different. But some people do it to just take advantage of others, and that's where I could give you some advice, even though I probably should. Yeah, like Bobby, I, maybe to build a Patreon. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Let's uh psyop all of our followers. 
Yeah, Brandon. It's, yeah, that's but Cyclops are followers. What you need to do is find a fringe thing that's going on. It's just like comedy, right? So in comedy, you find these things sometimes that people don't want to talk about, but you could joke about it because like racism, for example, because there's a lot of charge behind it. So you could kind of dance the line and people are uncomfortable. Then they'll laugh. They release pressure in that same way. You just look for uh, ways that people are discontented in their life. And then you come through with a cure to that discontent, but it has to rely on you. Like my whole thing in our show, right? We're always telling people how to heal themselves. And like, don't we even had a, um, a joke episode recently. We're like, don't worship us. Like we know we're great, but don't fucking worship us. Right. So, but as a cult leader, you would want the people to worship you. Cause if they put you on a pedestal enough, then what happens in these cults, uh, some people, like cult leaders always end up banging everybody's wife, right? Yeah, they love banging wives. Yeah. Now, do I want to do the thing like Julius Caesar, where he pretended like he didn't want to be king the whole time? So I pretend like, no, 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 don't call me God, even though I'm doing these miracles. Oh, of course. Yeah, that's a part it, of it. Because especially if you're getting like Christians involved or whatever, because that's the whole thing, right? Like you can't have a false prophet or a false idol. So you'd have to. Right, right. So I you're saying I need a pitch? Here. You're we saying need a I, see cause. I need a pitch and I need to say I'm not God, but I'm God. All right, here's my pitch. Yeah. Okay. If you feel so empty, so used up, so let down, if you feel so angry, Pat, so ripped off, so stepped on, just know you're not the only one refusing to back down. Is this some that guy's song again? What guy's song? Harry Chapin. No, that's a three days. We're not grace. a Harry Chapin podcast anymore. That's three days grace. Let's start a riot. That's worse. Go back to Harry <laughs> Chapin. Three All right, folks. Grace. Picture this. It was raining hard in Frisco. I needed one God more fair no to Harry make Chapin. my night. That's no. why no one follows us because we believe in the wrong problem. Here's Brandon. I know what Bobby could use. Bobby has a, a obsession with someone. A blow <laughs> job. Bobby could use a real blow job right oh, now. But this is close to that. Bobby has an obsession with someone. And that is Lindsay Lohan. Now, Lindsay Lohan is now pregnant. Now, Bobby could say that that is the immaculate conception from him thinking about her. And that is the next coming. And you could probably get some people to buy into that. And she's so nuts. She likes attention. She'd probably jump in. Oh, yeah. I could see that. I do like that. I do yeah. like that a lot. Now we got to get who do we get? Who's going to care about Lohan? Are we going to get mostly lesbians? Are we going to get desperate white people? Who cares about Lohan? A lot of Seacrest types. Ryan Seacrest? Yeah. So just men that we think are gay? Men that are gay but won't admit it yet. Okay. Well, they got money and they don't want... And we can have black male secrets on them. It's like, we know you're gay. <laughs> That's a big key of cult, right? Right? We got to keep... Blackmail, right, Brandon? And they don't have wives, so we won't fuck their wives, and then we won't get in trouble for that. No, we could we could have somebody fuck their their husbands. I think we should stay away from fucking it. <laughs> <laughs> That's where it all goes downhill. Right. Have you and seen the documentary thing? on Netflix, the Waco one? No, I have not. The best one they've ever done. It's it's literally everyone involved. All the footage. It's called Waco American Apocalypse. It's oh, wow. three parts. They got everybody. The reporter who was first there, people that got out that were in. A couple of survivors that were there, them, the FBI people, the sniper dudes, everybody talking. It's fucking insane. It's so wow. good. And Brandon, I know you don't know this, but I do. I produce a podcast by Richie Redding, who's a big conspiracy guy, and he watched it and was like, they actually got it like 75% right. Like the true story, 75%. Oh, that's cool. So, yeah, like there was a lot. He knows because he was there. No, no, no. But like a lot of the conspiracy they actually brought in, like most of the documentaries oh. wouldn't even address. Like they had people who were involved. They had the guy who admitted he probably fired the first shot, like oh, things wow. like that, yeah. that weren't in the mainstream. Yeah. So they it was have, like, they a real have all the footage, even the ones from all the, like, they have drone top. It's everything. Like you're seeing all the things that happened inside out. You got everyone, the FBI negotiator, everyone speaking. Did they talk about the guy that was eating cereal that got shot by a guy in a helicopter? Yes. <laughs> but they kind of talk about it a little different than that. But yes, it's the same guy, but they don't tell it in that same way. But it's the same thing. Yeah. They also talk about when Koresh was in front of the window early on and the sniper had him in sights, but they weren't allowed to take him out. But he could have ended this days earlier from where he snuck around on the side and set up. 
And he That's said he cool. felt like he knew Koresh knew he was there, even though he was like a mile away, because he kind of stood and taunted a little bit. You know, Did the guy they, uh... is known. This guy has been going around and solved many things in the world. And he's like, it would have been another day. <laughs> no big deal taking him out, but he couldn't do that. But the wild <laughs> thing is the woman, one of the women who got out, she's still on board. She's still 100% in. That's she, the bad part. She's just she like, thinks she had sex with it's God. not pedophilia when it's a cause. <laughs> Her exact words were, no, no, no. How could it be pedophilia? You come of age at 12 in our religion. Yes, that was the quote. Yep. Wow. Yeah. So, well, I mean, you know, in cultures past, like hundreds of years ago, she would have fit in. But these days, it's a little different. The good thing about our gay cult, no kids to worry about fucking. First of all, I don't want to be a gay cult. <laughs> <laughs> I'm out. This guy gay quick. We yeah. want people. So to... you're in. You're out. So you'd be in the cult. No, we want people. No, that's the wrong out. That's a great we joke. We want people that have a, something behind us. We can hold them in there and get their uh, money. Another stronger man. No sex. <laughs> Pat, who has more money than two incomes, no kids? Yeah, but dude, <clears throat> then eventually they're going to want you to fuck up and then you're going to get power hungry. You're going to fuck dudes. <laughs> Pat, if we know anything about me, again. it's that I'm not fucking butts for power. Not for power, That's where but for I glory. draw the line. Okay, not yes, again. for glory. I do a lot of things for glory. Yeah. Never again. Like, I learned my lesson. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fool me once. Shame on my guy's butt. But like, no, but we, we don't that want was it. my podcast yet. under Sharon. So what are we what are we doing with them? <laughs> they, they they bow down to the child that will be Lohan. They, and then what are we? What is the what is the other call? Once the baby's born, what are we doing? What How did we Jesus on? do? Do we live he, together? He he preached a lot of bullshit, so they listen to our podcast. Yeah, but do we have twelve and we do the flock thing? Do we have a lot of? Do we live together, but make them join the Patreon anyway? Are they at a live podcast? Um, we do it digitally, so we have twelve guys who hang out with us in person at all times, but the rest just subscribe to the podcast. Twelve people pay a thousand dollars a month to be. But our instead disciples. of instead of paying Patreon, they just give us their routing numbers and account numbers, so we just take the money out, and no one else can have it. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Patreon. Yeah, they, but I don't want to be the god. It's Bobby's. Mm -hmm. Like Boge oh. instead of Doge. I just <laughs> talked to Jesus. He said, "What up, Beezus?" I See, said, I don't want to bring I'm in chilling. Jesus. I want to bring in a new god. It's yeah. A it's a, let's bring it yeah because then you could go to war against the christians that's perfect yeah. and you could you could build your uh group even more because you'll be persecuted by christians we, we do need a good war hmm you know how we can get people in and you know, this is gonna be fucked up and whatever just hear me out we jump them in like the bloods we talk about how we don't believe in school and your kids are safer not in school than in school because of everything that's been happening and that would get vulnerable middle Midwest people be like, I don't want my kids getting shot. So all of a sudden they join us because we don't, we just free range our fucking kids. We just teach them the ways of the low hand. They got to watch like all the movies. <clears throat> I like trap. where your head's at. I like where your head's at. I just we don't only like... worship one parent trap, but not that other shit. I just don't I... like the idea of kids being the focal point of our cult. No, no, they're not the focal point, but they're going to have them there. If we use that idea, to get them in and then we once we get them in we go oh your kids aren't safe here either send them back to the other people and then they're not there but they're safe oh okay. i got a i got an idea why don't we okay. focus toward retarded kids because nobody fucks retarded kids and, and then, they're strong i we think need an they army. do oh but no they can't tattle though right I don't know. they can but who's believing them yeah that's what i mean so yeah have you but have you ever they're very seen... loud brandon there's yeah, a Reddit yeah. post, and it's like they taught us about uh, <laughs> molestation in school and, like, forced blowjobs, at which point one of the retarded kids freaked out, and they had to, like, pull him outside, and he was like, Billy does this every day, and it turns out Billy was another retarded kid who lived next door who had been molested, who was forcibly molesting this other kid, and it all came down because of this stupid video. Wait, a retarded guy molested another retarded guy? Yeah, he was being molested as well. and it That's was just regular chain. style, right? I think it cancels each other out like negative yeah. signs of math. Yeah. It's the new math. <laughs> the R's cancel each other out. Yeah, the extra chromosome <laughs> balances out. <laughs> it's the remainder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let's teach a newer math, the newest math. 
We have a new math. New the math. issue, though, is we need to start looking like gods, and neither of us is there yet. Why? Koresh didn't look like a god. Mm-hmm. That doofus who pl- made people drink Kool-Aid didn't look like a god. The guy who wanted to go to space wasn't the god. They were just dorks. Maybe oh, Brandon. Jim Jones? Yeah, that guy. Dork. What, That's a Kool-Aid guy. Not what cool looking hired at a Giga Chad to be the face, and we just told him what to say? What's a Giga Chad? Like a super in shape dude. Oh, I thought that was like a Pokemon. No. That sounds like a Pokemon. Did, uh, how come they never did a Kool-Aid commercial where the Kool-Aid guy smashed through the wall, but everyone was dead from drinking the Kool-Aid? Dude, I think that'd be a touch dark. <laughs> so what yeah. flavor would that be? <laughs> Grape. Dark raspberry. Oh, no, Bobby. What, Brandon? <laughs> dark raspberry, but I like grape. God damn it. No, the two of you. <laughs> We need to make it a color. So the Kool-Aid guy, first of all, the Kool-Aid guy should be rainbow colored now just to make him okay with everybody. No, because then it just comes out black. No, he has stripes. It's How are you going to stripe a liquid? How can Kool-Aid have eyeballs, Bobby? We're talking <laughs> semantics. You draw it on the glass. Clearly, it's a projection on the glass. He's pad. talking. Okay. You're oh, projecting yeah. the voice. Oh, you ever yeah. seen The Wizard of Oz? What if he goes, oh, hey, instead? <laughs> cool aids <laughs> yeah it's there the best kind we did it the best. <laughs> so magic johnson had he had the cool aids Dude, i saw a great yeah. meme the other day that someone shared and it was like it was i think it was Pedro bobby but i'm not sure but someone shared it where it was just like 10 hot women in the 80s and then magic johnson saying behind them they go yeah this was the day <laughs> <laughs> that's oh god that would be the first thing I'd bring up if I ever got into an a- argument with Magic Johnson. So what, he has AIDS? How'd you get it? So you're in an argument, and then you think he's going to tell you secrets? No, no, I'm just going to point out that, like, statistically speaking, it's very tough to get AIDS through heterosexual sex. Well, no, they said he was getting, he was sleeping with hookers and stuff. Yeah, yeah, okay. Still, very, very... Dirty, dirty hooker. Very statistically difficult. I'm just yeah, throwing it out there. Magic it was the Johnson. 80s. Yeah, exactly. He did the difficult. He had triple doubles all the time. Mm-hmm. And he had triple doubles in his butthole. No, Magic mm-hmm. Johnson didn't have the butthole sex. Yeah, how do you think he was able to throw the ball behind his back so well? It's from getting With his butthole? That's not even basketball. <clears throat> Maybe that's what basketball. the basketball is all about. <laughs> Larry Bird would never do that. <laughs> no. Mm-mm. No, the he would from French Lick don't like dick. <laughs> no. I, met, I saw Larry Bird at his house once. No, you didn't. Yeah, Were we went on family vacation. No, no, we went on family vacation to Indiana. The Larry Bird's house on vacation? You can do that? No, no, we went to French Lick. Why would you go to French Lick for vacation? Oh, honestly, I think my dad wanted to drive past Larry Bird's house, if I'm being <laughs> yeah, honest. I mean, that's not a destination. What's in French it, Lick? It really was. It was like, it wasn't just my family. It was my dad's whole family. Like, his whole family got together and went to French Lick for a week. And like the last days we were leaving, we drove past his house, and sure enough, the son of a bitch was taking his trash out. Oh, he still lives there. Yeah, it's beautiful. Do other people look like Larry Bird there? He has a brother, but he doesn't look like Larry. Oh, that's he good. looks like Larry if he stayed working on the railroad. Wait, he looks worse. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. He have a face. He doesn't have Larry's face, does he? He has Larry's face if he again spent all those years working on the railroad. I thought you meant he didn't have the basketball skills, but at least he got handsome. Mm-mm. He looks That's... weathered. I mean, Larry Bird, I, I think he's, you know, he's classically handsome, right? Isn't that what grandmas would say? <laughs> I mean, I'd fuck him. I thought you wouldn't have sex with men. Larry Bird's not a man. He's God. Well, yeah, ding, ding, ding. Larry, oh, yeah, dude, we, we get so many people from Boston with money to give away. If we got Larry Bird. I mean, it does seem sacrilegious, but the goat's the goat. You but could the get birds, of... the bird, the bird soars. A goat does not. The bird's the word. <laughs> you could get a lot of disenfranchised <laughs> white people on board who are mad that there's like more white actors or whatever. You know, you could that's do that. what we need because we're not going to get like any of the third world country folk. They don't have any money. We need disenfranchised white people. We don't need all the other minorities aren't going to give us their cash. And like it yeah. predicted, the white man rose from the dead and Luka Donich entered the no. NBA. <laughs> we're not going to go with anything that says white man rose from the dead. Then we're in a clan thing. Yeah, no, that's bad, especially with how we look. But Larry Bird is loved by all. Hey, did you guys hear uh, Jonah Hill? Yeah, the greatest savior of all times. 
Yeah. Yeah. Bob, Brandon, do you know about this? No. Oh, Bobby, you want to tell him? Oh, uh, yeah. So, uh, you know, so what Kanye... do you know about Kanye, first of all, Brandon, recently? Uh, I don't know very recent, but I know about how he got kicked out of Hollywood, kind of, or kicked out of that and lost his stuff. But then I heard For he what was... reason? Uh, because he said that there was like certain people with small hats and positions. You yeah, he hates say, all the Jews. He stuff. said he hated the Jews, and then yes, Bobby, tell him this is the. Well, greatest. he didn't say he hated the Jews. Oh no, he did. He, he did. said he actually wanted oh, no. to eat. Alex Jones podcast. Yeah. Alex Jones oh, tried I, to do yeah, it. I did. saw that. I saw. And that. He stopped him. It was like, no. To be clear, <laughs> Alex Jones was the voice of reason. <laughs> but he goes, I want to DefCon Five the Jews. It turns out one thing we weren't considering in the uh, racial system is Jonah Hill. Yep. Because Kanye West watched 21 Jump Street, and he likes Jewish people again thanks to Jonah Hill. Oh, nice. He and even I, said that. Because of Jonah Hill, I changed my mind. He's tremendous in 21 Jump Street. I like all the Jews now. And a lot of people are saying that's ridiculous because, like, how could Jonah Hill's performance in a movie change your opinion on an entire group of people? But I get it because... His performance in Django and Shane changed my perspective of things. But Jonah Hill wasn't being all, all Jewish in 21 Jump Street, was he? I never saw it. No, he really wasn't. He's just being Jonah Hill, right? Yeah. But have you seen the memes where they took it from the Justice League cartoon where it's the Flash running to like change time and go back in time? Yeah. But he's running with a copy of of uh, what's it called, Twelve Jump Street, to show Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. Do you guys know who Jonah Hill played in Django Unchained? I've seen the movie. I don't remember the, the character's oh. name. Oh, he has he has a cameo, and he's he's a Ku Klux Klan member. Right, but I, I thought you, I thought you meant you know his name. Like, no, that, no, no, that was the joke I was making. Is that he also changed my opinion by playing that character in a movie? Oh, we and got it. it. But with this new okay. cult we're trying to do, I don't want people to think we're the Klan. You know what, Pat? I don't know if we're meant to be in the same cult. <laughs> I think we're going to have rival cults. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think my cult's going to have some opinions about the I like that your cult. thing was like, well, listen, if we're not going to have the clan, then we'll we'll talk later. <laughs> That's where I draw the line. <laughs> you could always pit your clans against each other, too. Or your cults, sorry. Uh, my cult's a big fan of J.K. Rowling. We're just going to refer to everybody else as Mudbloods. Oh, there you go. And like J.K. Word. Rowling, uh, oh no, I was going to say uh, J.R.R. Tolkien loves the word faggot. <laughs> when did he say that? Oh, it's in it's in Lord of the Rings if you read the book. <laughs> but he didn't but he say I time. love it. <laughs> oh, well, he used it like he did. <laughs> Tossed on a few faggots on the smoldering flames. I was I like, yeah, think, this guy think, gets it. I don't think Mark Twain loved the N-word. Oh, he did. <laughs> no, Trust he me. just, you, I don't know if he's, neither one in their forward was like, I love it. I love it. No, he was Mark Twain yeah. was a different guy before he heard NWA. Okay, Pat. He saw somebody rushed him in NWA tape back in time. Yes, the Flash ran and goes. He goes straight out of Compton. <laughs> straight out of Compton. Yeah. Uh, the original yeah, draft um, of it called him a crazy motherfucker named Ice Cube instead of Jim. Wait, wait but I, I can't believe I'm gonna ask this question. Brandon, in which books did he use that word? Well, he used it uh, the classical term because faggot is generally... What's a classical one? It, one well, that, Roto goes, hey, he... Sauron, you faggot, and then he stabs <laughs> him in the eye. <laughs> oh, that was Bobby classic, gave Frodo. Away. I was going to... I was going <laughs> to... I was gonna explain it so much more eloquently. <laughs> Go ahead, Brandon. <laughs> he said he actually said fucking faggot. Uh no. Um when? I read them. When? No, so so faggot used to mean basically it used to mean useless, like useless as a bundle of sticks, because they would call a bundle of sticks just faggots that right. throw on the fire. So he uses that in that regard. He'll say, like when they're talking about fire, he'll be like, They threw on some faggots, but it's still funny to hear. Yeah, but he doesn't mean folk. Yeah, no, no, he doesn't no. Yeah. No, they, they don't they don't address the uh gay issue in uh Lord of the Rings, I'm not I'm pretty sure. They don't address it, they just made elves. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Those guys were fantastic you. looking. Oh, Apparently yeah. he used the term slant eyed monsters a lot, and people are saying that's racist. <laughs> no, but that just sounds like a penis. 
Let me show you my slant eyed monster. You know what I mean? In their defense, he said they caused the pandemic, so I don't know what that means. He did not. That, <laughs> what, your guys' books are weird. Those did not happen. Uh, we're reading a different version of Tolkien. <laughs> you ever get into the uh, Dune book series? Bobby? Not the book series. I watched the movie. No. It's very Whoa. pretty. It's crazy. <laughs> I, I was saying recently, I'm like, I think Lord of the Rings is our past and Dune is our future. Like, it's... What's our present? 21 now. Jump Street? <laughs> idiocracy. <laughs> Isn't that a hot take, guys? I think you're living in idiocracy. Have you ever heard of that? I've never say seen that? idiocracy. No, I haven't, but I know the general premise really well. It's a that was my favorite joke. military guy. General premise. <laughs> general premise. <laughs> he just says an idea and then leaves it. A lieutenant colonel who never made it to Colonel Colonel. He had to die as <laughs> Lieutenant Colonel. You know who we have to blame for this war in Iraq? General Premise. <laughs> he just walked in and was like, I think they have weapons of mass destruction. And then he left. They're like, guess, right, what we'll that. guess what word he loved? <laughs> <laughs> I like how you, Brad, I believe you. You're like, you get, you know what Lordy loved? Like, I was waiting for you to have a quote. Like, he's just like, I love it. <laughs> I love it. I can't faggots stop saying it. It's my favorite. Thick faggots warm my heart. <laughs> J.R.R. Tolkien. Like a bundle of sticks would. If you yeah, let them on exactly. fire. Uh, I, <laughs> I don't remember that from that movie. I just remember it being a pretty walk. <laughs> That's it. Lord of the Rings is just a really pretty walk for nine hours. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Good movie, though. Good movie. I like the movie. I like what Peter Jackson did with it. But he didn't make. I like that he did. If he made it now, there would have to be like a trans hobbit, which would be fun. They, I they think. did. This was a whole thing. What? This was a whole thing. They did make a new Tolkien show and. Well, the TV show, yeah. And, and a lot of people me. got mad. No, they didn't. I've been to open mics. Every open mic comic loves it because they're like Chinese Hobbit. That's crazy. Puerto Rican Hobbit. I'm like, well, then there's no Puerto Rico in Middle Earth, dummies. Are the Chinese hobbits cannibals? Because I'd imagine that's what General Sal's made out of. Oh, my God. Or dogs. <laughs> There's no dogs in Middle Earth. Yeah, I wonder why. <laughs> All the Chinese why, hobbits. <laughs> why are you guys ruining good books? You ruin cults. You ruin books. You guys. Ruin no, our every... cult's great, dude. <laughs> Your cult stinks. Your oh. Tolkien's mean. <laughs> Did you guys hear what that mudblood Pat just said? Yeah. <laughs> What's a, I'm a mud blood? Yeah, anybody who gets packed gets to sleep with the king for a night. Who's the king? You? Not king, but Bobby. <laughs> so wait, if they get me, they gotta sleep with you? They gotta catch a ten to fuck a four? Fuck that. <laughs> no, no, get like I got shooters <laughs> on deck. You know. I just like putting myself in a ten. Like basically, they gotta fight a four to fuck a four. <laughs> well, you know what our cult does to humiliate you, right? Make me watch my own podcast. I mean, that's part of it, but yeah. we shit in a, a, a bag and we light it on fire on your doorstep. Billy Madison style? Yep. I call oh, it it's no. cool as shit. <laughs> well, I hope may God may have mercy on your soul. <laughs> I think that's the 11th no commandment. Points. No more bags of steaming shit or um, fired shit. He called the shit poop. He called the shit poop. That's our cult based on Adam Sandler movies, but believing he was real. <laughs> There is a, isn't there a universal theory of all the Adam Sandler characters? I just know that all the women's names start with V. That, yes, that's one of the part of it. I forget what it is, but it's something about like he died and he has to live as all these different incarnations. I forget the whole story. Oh, I don't know that one. Is that kind of like the one with Snowpiercer and Willy Wonka? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. And like all the one. Disney movies that are connected. Yeah, in some way. And I guess the guy who drew them loved dicks. Yeah, yeah. A little murder. Yeah, like, yeah, but he was just drawing underwater castles. No one knows what those look. They probably would look like penises. If it's underwater, moving around. I'm just saying, you're drawing the Ariel in that bikini all day. You're going to throw a dick in somewhere. That's not on him. He, was, he wasn't drawing her sexy. She was a child, wasn't she? No. No, she is not supposed to be a child. She's not an adult. She's Who, dumb as shit. She's getting married at what, 10? Fuck you. In fish years, Bobby. Okay, like, yeah, that's like times seven point five, right? <laughs> yeah. Eric wasn't that old. Yeah, but he was cool. He was like, "This bitch doesn't talk. I'm gonna kiss her." Yeah, you know who was old? Ursula. That was old. 
Mm-hmm. He was like 12 and 12, but like 120 in fish years. Yeah. I can't make fun of that name, Ursula, because I did once by mistake and I hurt someone's feelings. Who? Well, Ursula. <laughs> no, I made a joke. I remember watching that with my nieces years ago and I put a thing on Facebook like, man, if your name is really Ursula and you've had children, you've outdid what you were supposed to do. Way to go. Nobody should fuck at Ursula. And then Dan Brown's like, that was my mom's name. I was like, oh my God, no. Well, that's the result. No, Dan's lovely. Mm -hmm. Saw him tonight. It does make sense, though, that his mom's name's Ursula. Like, that does open you up to a whole new world. He's definitely a unique person. So he comes from, it seems like he comes from a unique line of people, you know? Yeah, but you would think if your name was Ursula, you Mm -hmm. wouldn't name your child Daniel. I think you would. I think you'd be like, I'm gonna pick the most normal name, Dan Brown. You know, I would. If I was. If I had a wacky name. I'd go hardcore. And it does I'd make, make sense. Them the live natural, that life too. The natural nemesis of the octopus is obviously the bee. Yeah, he does hate the bees. The bee, like Fafner. <laughs> Brandon, I'm so curious. Do you know about Saint Isa? What is it? Saint Isa, I S S A, Indian. It sounds kind of familiar, but enlighten me. Basically, uh, it's this Palestinian guy. He showed up around age 12, went and learned in all the Hindu and Buddhist temples. Uh, most most famously, he went to the Temple of the Juggernauts, which like is very hard to get to, especially for a foreigner. And he left around age 30, went back to Palestine where he was from. The next thing they heard about St. Isa was he was murdered by Pontius Pilate for trying to overthrow the government. And uh, that's the end of, like, the historical record. But then they have a fantasy record, which is they snuck in to save St. Isa because Joseph, who gave Jesus his tomb, was also of Indian descent, and they brought in three healers to heal him. He snuck out the back door. He heard about Saul, who was killing all of Jesus' followers, and was like, I'll take care of it. Bought a bunch of fireworks, showed up and was like, surprise, motherfucker, he blinded Saul. And that's how the story goes. Oh, I like it. I figured that'd be right up your alley, and I was curious if you heard anything about it. Almost. The issue is any of those texts I find, like the videos, then go into, and here's how the aliens are connected, and it's like, God, I wish we'd stay away from that. I wish we'd stay focused on the text. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Well, it makes it glamorous, though, you know. Absolutely. It also it it involves something that's possible that people can never comprehend. It's like dark matter, like a lot of physicists will say that all their calculations only make sense because they all exist. matter now. Dark matter. Oh, yeah, they do. <laughs> dark lives matter, baby. Uh, but dark matter can't be proved. So it's, yeah, same thing. Very Aliens. Nice. I like it. Pat, what do you got, buddy? You I sent like you a picture to share with the first thing. Do I have to give you permission because we're doing the old school style? Let me see. Yes. I didn't real. I could have just shared it. My bad. I forgot we were doing old. It's all time. good, man. I can pull it up real quick. But we're gonna do a POS story if that's okay, because we haven't done with Brandon in a while. So absolutely. I'm sorry. I was just. I know no, that was a bit of a tangent. That's I was fine. Just very it, curious. That, it is two episodes that we've heard that story about the juggalos, but it's fine. Juggernauts, and that's you were really right. fascinated. I think it's more fun if it's the juggalos. <laughs> I could give you stuff to look into. There's this guy. He's a really good researcher that wrote some books about. Uh, who Guess what Jesus. word he loves. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna love this, guys. Uh, he uh, he did a lot of investigation with Paul and uh, Jesus and all this stuff. Like there could have been a real character that was trying to become the emperor of Rome. So I'll Ooh. I'll send that. Yeah, to you. send that over to me. I, I always like following down your rabbit hole. You send me down. Yeah. That, here's your picture. If buddy. anyone here is watching this and wants that information, don't message me. <laughs> Reach out to Pat. He'll let you know. <laughs> because I'll be sleeping. Okay. Mom horrified after daughter makes her a you love vodka card at school. <laughs> <laughs> That's what that card is right there. That lady's face looks like she likes vodka. Yeah. Oh, I don't think she's wrong. Her By husband way, Bobby, probably it, has it, to. it is a pun at the beginning. But I think they did a good job this time. Let's hear it. That's the spirit. <laughs> <laughs> I'll allow it. One mom from England was left guffawing after her 10-year-old daughter presented her with a car dedicated to her love for vodka and even had help from her teachers to make it. 
uh, fucking post. Jordana Jones' daughter, Jalen, came home from school with a special note for her that read, You love vodka, girl, adorned with a photo of a purple bottle of the booze on the front. Jones even added the words, I heart vodka across the front. Inside, she decorated it with hearts. It was really unexpected. A 30 year old mom of four revealed to Kennedy News. Was it just what was it really unexpected? Like she did laugh, so I'm guessing it wasn't like, <laughs> yeah, that's weird. <laughs> like, I just did a nervous laugh. Like, have you actually done this? I was quite shocked. Jones's teachers assisted her in the card making process and even helped her cut out a picture of the vodka bottle and paste it on the front of the paper. I like that the teachers embraced it. That's definitely England, though, because there wouldn't be nobody from America would be like, they'd be like, this is terrible. We got to call DCF in England. They're like, hello, we'll make this for you. It? <laughs> Oi, mom's a bit of an alky, is she? <laughs> She had the card behind her back, and she was quite giggly, Jones said. Then she handed it to me, and I was like, oh, my life, and left. The card the card wasn't all on, on the rocks, though. Jones added in a line that read, no, you are the best mom ever. Mm-hmm. However. We stop drinking. <laughs> well, there's the here comes the next part. However, there's a catch. The mom claimed that she actually doesn't drink vodka. She thinks her daughter got the booze confused with her favorite bottle of plum gin. <laughs> so it's like she's like, well, I don't drink that. I'm an alcoholic on something dumber. <laughs> something her, way more British. Yeah, yeah I love like the beyond British. Plum We're not gin. Russian here. <laughs> <laughs> but her mom doesn't mind, and she's pretty proud of her child for her sassy sense of humor. She's very outgoing and funny, Joan said about her daughter. She's quite a comedian. She continued about the card. She was quite proud of it. She said that the teachers said it was great and that they'd help her to cut the bottle out to stick on the front. Shortly after Jones received her daughter's card, she had a parent's night at her school where the teachers praised her child for the funny incident. But and so Jones said that she thinks her husband might be the next to target now. <laughs> it's just a picture of a gun and him. <laughs> They said she thought outside the box and that it was really funny, Jones revealed. She and her husband, Tom, are treasuring the funny piece of art and have plans to put it in a memory box. Right now, it's resting on their mantelpiece at home, which the mom calls a pri- a place of pride. It said a pride of place, but that is not a phrase. So, not even in England, I don't think. Jones even took her to her Facebook page to share more about the Holy Spirit of all gifts posting a picture of her daughter's card to the platform. It racked up more than 600 likes, shares, and comments. Although Jones was dazzled by her daughter's creativity, she said that she hopes her husband is the next target. He thought it was picture perfect. I did remind him that it's not long until Father's Day, and that quickly took the smile off his face, Jones joked. It'll be his turn next. Who's the POS of this story? Is it the daughter for making a card for her mom with a bottle of booze on it or is the teachers were like yeah this is great we will help they're probably ignoring other kids like yeah we'll help you give your mom a bottle of booze card is the mom for like yeah this is great this isn't an issue you're not going to be somebody who's terrorizing people later at 10 when you're making cards reminding people of their shortcomings you're not going to be toxic later on that's fine is the dad for like haha you're an alcoholic or is it the New York Post? This is funny. This is not news. This is not news in any way, shape, or form. There are a lot of terrible things happening right now. In the, in the world, there's a lot of bad stuff. Plum Jim cards is not the thing. Who's the POS? Brandon, go first. Uh, Well, first, I just want to say, it looks like, I mean, those people are the most British-looking people I've ever fucking seen in my life. It looks like they got a casting director and I'm like, can you get us the most British-looking people? <laughs> Wow. I would have to say, though, that the piece of shit is uh, probably the dad, but mostly for having sex with that ugly British lady. <laughs> to make they that child. lovely daughter. Yeah, but. A, he's a comedian. That's the thing, right? So the daughter now, they with this crazy thing they shouldn't have done, they created this awesome, funny daughter. So that's cool. You know, it wasn't all for loss, but yeah, I would say definitely the dad. <laughs> but don't you think, like, I don't know. I- I'd be concerned 
if I was the one of the teachers, like this, this can't be good. Is she being <laughs> exposed to too much alcoholism? I know it's England and we drink, but like, I guess it's kind of fun. You know what I mean? Like somebody should have been like, "Hey, is everything good at home?" Yeah, yeah, that may. Might this have been is what mom question. like. You, I bet, I bet you, another kid drew a picture of themselves. Like, why would you draw that? Because my mom loves me, not a <laughs> bottle of plum gin. Bobby. Yeah, it's the teachers. Yeah, because these bitches have a double standard. If it was Father's Day before she made this for her mom. And they made it. She made the exact same card. They would have called child services. You know what? Because <clears throat> it's a double standard. Mom likes to have a drink. Oh, it's fine. Dad has a drink. Dad's out there chasing his dream. Dad doesn't have enough time to spend with the family. Mom has to go fuck a magician behind his back. It, it's these bitches, teachers. Wait, you know? what? Yeah. This is not about you. <laughs> it's always about me, Pat. No. Join the cult. <laughs> what if? What if for Father's Day she drew a picture of a woman and it's like. She was like black and she's like, who's this? Like, this is daddy's special friend. (laughs) Yeah. Daddy loves this woman. Daddy loves hookers. Daddy loves her. Her name's Plum Gin, too. She's an Asian woman. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, me, Plum Gin. I love him. Yeah, he he my rubber. Mama get drunk and then me come over. Plum Gin. That's an Irish accent, by the way, for everybody scoring at home. Um I think the piece of shit in this story is the child. <laughs> like, what the fuck? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, everybody else got on board because we're in a day and age where it's like, can't yell anybody anymore. You can't you can't stifle shit. Everyone's trying to be open-minded. But this kid's like, yeah, let's test the limits. I've noticed it on the internet that you can't really yell at kids anymore. I wonder <laughs> if I can call my mom an alcoholic. That's what happened there. She was mad. She didn't get some toy. And she brought it home. But the girl was smart enough to show it to the teachers, have them do it, say to her mom, don't you love it? I've told everyone. I even told people to put it on their social media. So everyone knows that I've given you a picture of plum gin or vodka or whatever I think it totally is. And she probably knew her mom drank plum gin. She wanted her mom to have to go, well, actually, that's not the thing I have a problem with. I have an issue with plum gin. Plum gin has ruined our lives and made it so your cry for help is going to school and putting up pictures of booze and making the teachers help you because they feel terrible about your life. And they don't, because in your lunchbox, there was a bottle of scotch and they didn't know what to do with it. So now you got this plum gin. It's the daughter for just trying to trash the mom for just trying to drink. Cause like Brandon said, she's not attractive. And she knows that if she has to booze it up and listen to a man, you ever hear an English man excited? Nobody wants to hear that grunting over you. Oh, oh, governor. Like nobody wants that. Is it in it yet? Is it in it yet? Like yelling that the whole time. She has to drink heavily. Mommy loves using slurs. And then she draws a diagram of each. Yeah. With a slur. A pie chart of each one. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's just like 89% cunt. <laughs> they like no, no, I'm talking about a picture for each slur. So like there's a you woman that them? says cunt. And then there's like a black. Hair. Why do you draw that? What? How do you draw? This is what mommy loves. No, but how do you draw a cunt? I would just draw a woman. If you have one, you want one. That could be a guy too, a mate. You're more more accurate with your description. I'd say nine times out of ten. Hooligans too. They got those. (laughs) Just their dad, daddy hooligan. But I do like that. I think it's fun that it's. They say a lot of times teachers are out, but like my daughter is now um, uh, a para at a school. She's talking about kindergarten kids and stuff like that. And she said today she had to have two of the kids stop because they were playing this game called halftime. And I said, "What's halftime?" Go, halftime apparently is when two kids sit by a table and yell halftime and then slam their heads onto a table <laughs> and then go like this. And I'm like, "What the?" She's like, yeah. So you have to go over and go, hey, guys, how about we don't do halftime anymore? No, Games are back on. Yeah. <laughs> but then one of the kids, one of the kids was real mad because he got told he couldn't do stuff. So he turned to one teacher and goes, guess what? I'm going to go home and call the police and you're all going to jail. And they're like, well, he goes, here's the people going to jail. And my daughter told me I was so psyched to hear that I was the only person not going to jail. <laughs> 
Your daughter sounds like a pimp. She was like, this is great. But I like that this kid, obviously, I this is what happens there. Same thing with the drinking thing. It's all fun and games. But someone's at home either always telling this kid they're calling the police, which is an old parenting move that I always hated. You better clean your room or the police are like, why are you making the kid fear the cop for this reason? There's other things to do. It's not a smart move. And then they find out that's not the case. Like, did the police actually do anything? It's a weird thing to do. Or even weirder, that this kid is hearing mother, mom, and dad yell, I'm calling the police on you, nonstop because bad shit's happening. And then those kids come home with plum gin cards. I introduced my brother to gangster rap at way too young of an age. How old? So my, like, uh, before kindergarten. <laughs> yeah, like he was into it. So, like, my parents. You hear the words. He's just like, yeah. My parents yelled that once. We're going to call the cops. And he responded, good. We kill cops around here. Asked him about my boys and, like, hit him with, like, a gangster move. And they oh, stopped boy. pulling that card again. <laughs> At least he didn't say the N word or anything. Oh, not on air. <laughs> not you. I meant the kid. My brother. Yeah, yeah. Just he wasn't on the on air. Him. I'm saying he's never said it on air. <laughs> All right, we'll do one more POS to get out of here. Absolutely. Then, Brandon, I need you to be my dark magician. All right, let's do it. Do I got to give you a picture? I think we're good. Mm. Um, I have six wives and plan to have a baby with each one. Yeah, the POS is, POS is the reporter. Can you <laughs> guess? the man. <laughs> Bobby, can you guess the, fr- the, the joke pun at the beginning? Half a dozen reasons to get a vasectomy. No, you're going to be mad. I am. Let's hear it. If it ain't broke, don't six it. No. No. They could have done better. And I like pun. That's not Yeah, good. that's that's not it. That's not. That's, that's not. I like the half dozen thing. Yeah. Way better. Like, you know, uh, what, what was the cheaper by the half dozen? Yeah. I think the old saying is six in one hand, half a dozen abortions in the other. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I think that's the thing. A 37 year old man from Brazil has six wives. Instead, he's planning to have babies with each one of them. Arthur, oh, God damn it. Arthur O. Urso is currently married, quote unquote, okay, I don't know why, to lucky <laughs> ladies Luana, Ameli, Valquira, Olinda. Damiana and Amanda. They have last names, but they're way too hard. Um, yeah, they're all his. No, Rodriguez. they're not. They're not all his. And by the way, their ages go 27, 21, 24, 51, 23, 28. Wait, run that by me one more time. He's got to have a bottom bitch at 51. Yeah, that's what 27, I was 21, 24, 51, 23, 28. Is Damiana at 51? No, Olinda Maria. Interesting, because Damiana was my guest for bottom bitch. Luana Kazaki is 27. Emeli, I'm saying that because it's E M it's like smelly, but with an E instead of an S. Emeli, yeah. Yeah. Emeli Souza, 21. I send you an email. Valkina Santos, 24. Olinda Maria, 51. Damiana That's... with no last name. Damiana is just 23. No like Madonna. Like no fucking last name. Um it's like Damien, but A at the end. Yeah, that's why she's the bottom bitch. Yeah. And Amanda Alber- Albuquerque, 28. Which I'm guessing it's not her real New name. New Mexico. Yeah. <laughs> um, Since he doesn't want to disappoint any of them, they're all opting for surrogacy in order to grow their family. I don't want to make any of my six wives upset by choosing which one gets pregnant first. So we've all opted for surrogacy. Is, am I saying that word right? Surrogacy? Surrogacy, yeah. Okay. Yeah, sure. Urso told nudepr.com. Is that a, is that a paper? <laughs> Nude PR. Interesting. Yeah. In very, order very... to kickstart the process, Urso is aiming to use his first wife Luna's eggs for the first implantation. <laughs> he has a picture of them. I think one's a fellow. Um, I could be wrong. I'll I'll send it to you, Bobby, quick, and then we can put it up, and you can... I, maybe I'm wrong. I just one of them looks a bit tough. But Brazilian women can always can be attractive, but also look t- 
tough. You know what I mean? They've got yeah. both. I've seen their pornography. And they're wearing matching outfits in this movie. Wait, how much Brazilian porn? Do you look up Brazilian porn? No, or do you look up porn and they just happen to show up? When it shows up, they're very aggressive. I don't think I've ever seen Brazilian. Or if I did, I didn't know it was Brazilian porn. You would know. You, I, what do they do? You just hear a lot of shrieking in Portuguese. Yeah, like the one on the left, right? No, oh, yeah. <laughs> I could see that, yeah. Is that the old one? No, the old one's back middle above him. You can tell she's hiding most of her body. He's a fancy little man. He looks like Tuco from uh, Breaking Bad. <laughs> he does have Tuco looks. Whoa. He's Tuco Pac. But um, oh, I think we have the names. No, we don't. Never mind. I thought we had it going across. Oh, wow. Oh, never mind. Hold on. Everything just changed. Hold on, Bobby. There is now it's different. Now, now we've got a story. I'm happy I don't read these things beforehand. Here we go. Give you it this. sounds like us every month of our podcast. Yeah. Hold on. Things are different now. Everything's yeah. about to change. Well, wait till you re- see this photo. But um, Take it to the movie, shorty. Oh, I like this. I don't. Oh, <laughs> no. I don't like this third one. However, this plan took a lot of convincing as the otherwise were not keen to the idea at first. Um, in the beginning, it was a very del- delicate subject, especially as I want a child with each of them. He explained, now the plan is going full speed ahead, but that will be later on. At the moment, the best decision is sur- surrogacy. Look at this photo. What the fuck? Yeah, and there's they're missing one. I don't the think old, these people should be able to have children. I don't think the old one could get down yeah. like that. Yeah, she is also 51 and shouldn't have a baby. Well, she's not. She's just egging it up, right? The Brazilian patriarch revealed that they're all willing to spend $41,000 on the entire surrogacy process, but would be open to adopting in the future as well. Currently, we are looking for someone who can be our surrogate, and we want someone who gives us confidence, he admitted. Urso has a 10-year-old daughter from a previous relationship, but he's hoping for a son next. I hope he and hasn't had any... In just eight years, she's going to join the squad. Well, I'm guessing she's not allowed to see this man. That would probably be in the best interest of her. It is Brazil, though, I mean. is that Are they loose with giving I, a fuck about kids? Who knows? She's probably in a volleyball program. He has money. It looks like he's trying to start a cult to me. And I yeah, think that does have that. cult-like feels. And I, think- I don't know if he has money because when you wear a Santa hat, you're usually poor. <laughs> you know what I mean? All I, I know think is- that lady's the one who's in charge, really, the 51-year-old lady. Not the giant one that was on the ground. That's not in charge of anything. No. All I know, Pat, is Patrice and Jim Norton didn't go down to Brazil because of their strict conservative Judeo-Christian values. Why'd they go down to Brazil? To fuck whores. Oh. oh. They, have, they have whores there? Yeah. Is it legal for whores? It's like, does it matter? To me, for the question I'm having asking, yes, it matters. Are they legal? No, no, no. But like, it's one of those countries where it's like, I don't know, but it doesn't really matter. Because if you have enough money, you can kind of do whatever you want. But if you were an American like them and went there and got whores, wouldn't they arrest you? Because they're like, ha, Americans. But like, no, because they're like, this is whatever. the backbone of our economy. <laughs> oh, waxing was. No, that's here. That's the ones who make it out. Oh, they made it. I've never been through <laughs> anything like this, so it's the first time Urso said, we're very anxious but excited to make the dream of having a baby come true. Yeah, the, I mean, he's new to a lot. When yeah. Urso and Kazaki got together, they were both swingers, and they decided in 2021 to open their relationship to other people. Um, I don't want to send you this other picture, but I think I need to. Ugh. Yeah, I don't like this, but I think I we'll end it on this. But yeah, who's the piece of shit in this story? Is that guy for like announcing this? Why is it being announced? Why can't you just talk to your six wives, even though it doesn't seem like you're married to any of them? You're just calling them wives and you're like, you want attention. This is like trying to get a reality show or some shit. Because to me, it's like you're going to get them all pregnant. Just come in. Them. That's how you do it. You're Brazilian. You're probably loaded in there. Everything's going to work out good. So why don't you do it that way? Have a surrogate. We need this kind of money. Hopefully we can do this. Is it these women? It's like, what are you doing? 
This is what you chose your life to do. I'm going to hang out with this guy. I'm going to wear a leash and be like Rudolph. Like, what are we doing on the ground doing weird shit? Or is it the 10 year old daughter for me? Like, Hey, don't mention me. She should have been like, Hey, don't ever put me in your stupid articles. This is dumb. Or it's like the first or the, the first girl that was with him and like, yeah, let's be swingers and get some friends. And that stinks. Or is it the person that wrote this article? Cause this isn't fucking news. Who is the piece of shit of the story? Bobby, you go first. It's um all of them, and I'll tell you why. Take a look at this picture. All of them. How many have a red nose? Four. Yeah. Two. I see no. four, yes, four. All four have a red nose. Only yeah. Rudolph had a red nose. You're not being accurate to the story. Oh, Bobby, I think that's an STD on their face. <laughs> In that case, it's what knows bang deer. <laughs> In that case, it's the 51 year old. You should know better. The rest of them, you're young, you make mistakes. Everybody joins a cult. I would join mine. By the way, that picture is basically saying, Tell us you're gay without telling us you're gay. I've got four women who think I'm attractive and want to have sex with me. Yeah, let's dress them up like reindeer and hold reins on. <laughs> Like, There's nothing to about do. That Bobby, I sent you a picture that also I think leans everyone in the favor of him being the POS. Why don't you show this one? I think you're gonna but Brandon, who do you think it is? I think it's that 51 year old lady. I, I think this Why? is like a, I have a feeling that she's the one who's oh geez, yeah. See, this guy's definitely like uh, uh unstable or like narcissistic. So yeah. I think that lady is like controlling him by feeding his ego. Because why is he going to fuck a 51-year-old lady, you know? She, well, he's not he fucking has, him. He probably has mom issues, and she's playing up on that. No, she probably owns the house they live in. Or, or yeah, that's it, too. That could be it. Yeah, she's probably got money or something. And then I bet you one of those women are her daughter. There's the age, Yeah, I was right? thinking about that, yeah. It's goofy that they would do that. But she probably has the money or like Brazilian insurance. I don't know what that is, like a banana leaf or something. But they got something there. But he only looks like, you know, when you ever watch those movies like Da Vinci Code and shit, and the guy who's like, I will sacrifice everything for the Lord. And he has all the tattoos of like the Bible on him and shit. He's all posing nude. And he's going to yeah. shave his head and then fight Tom Hanks. And just sitting in that position, you can see he's not going to be open to sharing himself emotionally with those women. So he's sitting in a very guarded position. No. But he does. If you, Good observation, Bob. If you just did the headshot part, it's like you know when you see that picture on a flyer for a comedy show, you're like, oh, that's an actor who's trying to tell jokes. He's not going to be funny. That's what he looks like. Like he's in a Brazilian soap opera. He, yes, you nailed it. <laughs> I don't like that you and I both have these pictures now of this man. Yeah, now in my phone. I'm not happy about you guys need to forever. fly down to Brazil and investigate this. I want to know. <laughs> I don't like hookers. <laughs> Look at Bobby. He's like, I'll go. Yeah, I'll check it out. See what, what's going on. I'll, I'll report. Bobby, back. if you went to Brazil, yeah, alone, mm-hmm. and your plans were just to go sightseeing, and you were there for two weeks, right? Call the cops because something's wrong with my mental health. Go on. No, I know, but well, we already know that you're going through a lot. You're like. So, you know, so you're like, I'm going to escape, go there. How many days would it take before you stop sightseeing and got a hook? I would not in a foreign country. But okay, let's change it from Brazil to Brooklyn. How many days would it take? Four hours. Four. Hooker? Yeah, I mean, I'm not saying we'd fuck, but maybe like go see a movie and jerk me off or something. Who knows? Why can't you just ask someone to do that? Not the jerk part, the movie part. And then it leads to the jerk part if you're nice enough to. Yeah, but then you got to be nice and shit. You could just make a financial transaction. Why can't you be nice? Eh. That's not defense, huh? Hmm? That's not you. You would be a bad lawyer. What? Who me? (laughs) (laughs) Your Honor, he's me. (laughs) Is he? Am I the one under? No, I mean, would you go to Brazil? You like hiking? Hang on, go to Brazil. It's just like, yeah. how much effort would you put in? And you know it's just going to end in heartache, right? Why would it end in heartache? You could be Inevitably, not... every relationship you get in is going to end in heartbreak. Oh, my God, you're sad. Yeah, because, all right, right, Pat, let's say you're in a relationship with a woman, right? Yeah, One of two that's things the only is way happen. I would. 
So you guys are going to break up or one of you is going to die. But that's not heartache. Yeah, it's going to be sad either way. Why? What if I'm pain. happy with the breakup? There's going to be pain there. No, there's not. You You're happy just, with the breakup? So, so there's going to be no pain that leads you to the breakup? Not if I'm pumped. <laughs> oh, fucking Jesus, that scared the shit out of me. Yeah, you can't you talk about Brazilian breakups until a black cat flies in the screen. Yeah. Right, though? You know what I mean? Like, so why no, put I the don't know what you mean. I think, I think you can break up and be mutual and be happy. Well, Bob, some well, breakups are relieves. I kind of see what Bobby's saying, but, you know, we're all going to die. And I think mm-hmm. the faster you come to terms with that anyway and just say, fuck it, we're going to die anyway. And I'm kinda... coming fast to terms of $50 a hand job. There you go. I'd rather play a couple games at halftime than do that. Halftime. <laughs> <laughs> that would be it. Yeah, I think the piece of shit is that guy. <laughs> yeah, I think we all agree. Yeah, I don't know why we would think anybody else. Look at me, everybody. I can get ladies pregnant. What are you, four? Calm down. <laughs> what are you, a comedic magician? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> God damn it. Do you need the vent before we go? No, nah, I'm good. I probably shouldn't say anything. You've said too much. No, nah, I haven't said enough. But should we day. congratulate them on their home? No, we shouldn't. <laughs> we send them a gift, maybe a card of vodka? Maybe a Maltov cocktail. No. I hear fire brought their relationship together. No, Maybe fire will a purify picture of Molotov it. cocktail and light it on fire and send it to him. Interesting. I'll consider it. Yeah, I know a 10-year-old girl who can make it for you. Maybe I'll just <laughs> give them the gift of stop following on Instagram. Yeah. I don't know why you're doing that. It's why are you be... on social media with any of these people? Yeah. In the infamous words of Harry Chapin. No. Here, she's acting no. happy. No. No. Inside her I'm happy that home. she's happy. You do this to and me. me. I'm flying in my taxi. You know what? I- I'm going to send them a gift, like uh, just a picture of you sad. And they can hang it in their house. Because what the fuck, Bobby? Why is Chapin always in my life? Because all of my life's a circle, Pat. Sunrise to sundown. You, you got to shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't like new music. There's no real. But like- nobody likes Harry Chapin. Brandon, have you ever been asked in all your years of weddings to play Harry Chapin? I can't say that I have. No, because that's not love. That's not wedding music. It's what is it? Music suicide? It's it's the story of America, man. No, it's not. Yeah. America is Bruce Springsteen. Oh, you get the fuck out of here! Ooh, I'm a boss. Ooh, I'm a hardworking man. Yeah, a DUI, that guy's but gay, they right? didn't report it. Hey, little me. girl, is your daddy home? Yeah, that's a little weird. You gonna leave her all alone? Wrap me up like a burning douche. desire. You guys know the rumors of the night. Ooh, I'm on fire. Pete Holmes has a great bit about that. <laughs> Wasn't there some guy behind the glass going, "Hey, Bruce, it's fucking weird, man. <laughs> Don't do it." <laughs> hey, winger, you know, 18 sounds just as good as 17. She's only 18. No, you need like. You could do she's only 23. Like, you need something like that. You know what I mean? You could go older. 18 doesn't work with 17, but definitely mm. other numbers do. Yeah, good point. I she's picked the one that did. She's not didn't. illegal. She's, she's, a full, she's a fully legal adult. Fully legal adult. In you some states. <laughs> you think when that song, this. before that song came out, the other guys in the band were like, what the fuck, Kip? Why is the band called your last name? And then after that song, like, thank God the band is called After Kip. Oh, Kip, you really did us a solid. (laughs) Thank you. I don't want this molesty song all over us. Uh, Boy, am I happy it's called The Cosby Show and not The Theo and Rudy Show. Thank you, Mr. Cosby. Thanks, Bill. Brandon, thank you so much for joining us. Tell people where they can check out your fun stuff. Uh, well, my website is more laws, more problems.com and it's over 10 years old. Now you can actually go back and read blogs that I it's wrote old enough to send a card of vodka to it. It's all it's old enough to send Jim plum. What was that? <laughs> plum gin. Plum gin. So wasn't weird. he in star Wars? <laughs> yeah, yeah, he was <laughs> plum gin. He's the one who flew into the death star. Yes. In the he X-Men. was a Tatooine. Tatooine. Uh yeah, so more laws, more problems.com. Check out the oversharing show. You could just go to the oversharing show on that website on YouTube. 
my channel is Brandon Bonanza, so you could find me there as well. And uh, yeah, check it out. It's been going really well. Look forward to a lot of Dune stuff. I think I'm going to start doing podcasts about Dune. It's been blowing my mind. So nice. hell yeah, it's it's like one of the most underrated. Yeah, it's crazy. Like I think uh, old Dune or new, just the books, right? The books, yeah. But in the, I've heard it described as Game of Thrones in space or Game of Thrones in space with drugs. And that's basically what it is. Yeah. It's, it's I'm going to have to check this out. Yeah. The audiobooks are really good. They're kind of like a radio show. We could, I found the whole channel on YouTube, but then they took it down. So, but yeah, <laughs> you can find it if you look. Just even the original one's really good. But anyway, this isn't a Dune commercial. Check out my stuff, guys. <laughs> Just in case all of you were like, is that a Dune commercial? Yes. We are now brought to you by Dune. <laughs> Dune. <laughs> Bobby. Uh, head on over to Pat's Distro Kid Hyper Follow page and pre-order his album Stay Dry. You may have heard it on Sirius. There's extra tracks over there. It's a whole new experience. Lots of fun. Let's get it to number one on the charts. Yeah, do that. And if you live in central Pennsylvania, which none of you do, I will be at the Allen Theater this Saturday. Come on out. Yeah, do that too. And yeah, get my album. That would be dope if you pre-ordered it. We make it number one. Let's do all that fun stuff. Once again, thanks to everyone that reached out. Uh, thank you to Bax and Nagel for letting me be on Rock 102 this morning to, to uh, promote the album. And uh, that was fun there. And sorry about the story I told about the Jews. I didn't know that'd make you upset on the air. Anyway, um, <laughs> I just thought it was a fun tale. But you said, do what you got to do. Anyway, um, so also... This weekend, I'll be at Comics Mohegan Sun Thursday through Saturday uh, hosting for a co-headlining group that uses the term. Bobby, ready for a pun? They're both tattooed, and they're in love. So it's called Love Inks. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. With Natalie Cuomo and Dan Lamort. They're the co-headliners, and I'll be hosting for them. And then Sunday, I'll be headlining there with my friend Dave Hintz and Giancarlo will be the opening acts, and it'll be fun there. So I'll be there the whole weekend. Uh, other shows to get, my show, I got two shows this month at Retro and Derby, the 8th and 22nd. I've got event rights up there. Get those tickets. I've also got August, April 27th, sorry, is the um, – Stress Factory, I'll be headlining there with AJ from Taz and AJ on the show, and the tickets are up on their site there. Got some other shows coming up as well. Join the Patreon. That'd be nice if you did that. We're starting a cult. Get in the cult. It'd be fun for you to have the cult. We will not have Good sex point. with your family. Promise. So, Brandon. Bobby might if she's a Brazilian hooker. But anyway. <laughs> or Lindsay Lohan. If she's yeah. Lindsay. Brazilian Lohan. Oh, my God. Brazil's I'm going to go beat off to that. <laughs> Brinsley. Brinsley Lohan. <laughs> <laughs> that would be gross. Anyway, thank you, Brandon, so much for being on the podcast. And Bobby. If you can't join them, beat them, and check out my new entertainment column in the New York Post with my first pun, Love Inks fucking stinks. Oh, dude. <laughs> Peace.